What's up y'all, this is a recipe for anyone who already knows how to make a gar and doesn't want to sit through the whole video. And I also want to give a quick shout out to Philly Golden Teacher for this recipe. I learned it off his YouTube channel if you want to go check his video out as well. Let's get started. What's up y'all, today we will be making a gar. For this, you'll need cups. You can find these at a grocery store, a scale, agar agar powder, potato flakes, 400 milliliters of water, corn syrup, mason jar, stove, a pot, and a pressure cooker. Once you're ready to start, we'll start off by scaling out eight grams of agar agar powder. Now that you have scaled your agar powder out, begin to add your 400 milliliters of water into the pot, and then we'll add the agar powder directly into that. Now we will repeat this process with the potato flakes and the corn syrup. Scale and then put into the pot. For the potato flakes, we will be scaling out 12 grams of potato flakes. Once your 12 grams has been scaled out, proceed to put it into the pot. Now we're going to add 4 grams of corn syrup. Corn syrup is very thick, so you don't need much at all. I was off a little bit, but the good thing about this recipe is that you don't have to be exactly on point. So going a 0.5 over isn't too bad. Once you've added everything into the pot, we're going to turn the stove on high heat and let this get to a boil. As soon as it hits a boil, we're going to remove it and put it into the mason jar. Make sure to stir consistently so everything gets mixed together. Now that it has reached a boiling stage, we can take it off the stove and put it into our mason jar. So for the amount of agar cups that I needed, I doubled this recipe. That's why my mason jar looks so full. And if you need a certain amount of agar cups that need to be filled, just double, triple, quadruple the original recipe that was given to you. As you can see right here, I put my lid on backwards. This isn't necessary, you can put your lid on normally. I just got confused between green and agar for a second, but put your lid on normally. It, I just accidentally put it on backwards here. Once you are ready to begin sterilization, add 3 quarts of water into your pressure cooker. Before adding your jar into the pressure cooker, make sure that you unscrew the lid just a little bit, just so the jar is about finger tight. This will allow steam from within the pressure cooker to get into the agar and sterilize it completely. Also make sure to put aluminum foil on top of your jar lid. Now that you are ready, put the lid to your pressure cooker on 
and make sure that it does not have a weight for about the first 10 to 15 minutes. This will allow the PC to vent the air out within it and it will reach 15 PSI way faster. Once your PC has hit 15 PSI, turn your stove down to medium and hold it there for 45 minutes. Once it has been 45 minutes, turn off your stovetop, but do not remove the weight on the pressure cooker. Just let it depressurize on its own. As your pressure cooker is depressurizing, I'm going to show you a simple way of making a still air box. Just grab a preferably a 62 quart tub or anything bigger than that and just flip it upside down and leaving a medium sized gap to be able to fit your hands under and do all your inoculations in. So before pouring your agar, make sure it is at least at 120 degrees or lower, but make sure that it is not too low or it will solidify within the jar. I don't have a laser thermometer that would help out a lot. I simply go by touch. Be careful if you are going by touch, not to burn yourself because it could be dangerous, but I don't have a laser thermometer. Before I pour, I give the jar a quick shake to make sure everything is mixed together perfectly. And then I begin the pouring process. The cups come clean enough out of the bag to pour instantaneously. You don't have to sterilize or clean them at all. They will not be contaminated right out of the bag. Stacking your cups on top of one another will help with the condensation within the cups. Now just repeat this process until you have poured all of your agar. finished wait about three days before using the agar cups just to see if any type of bacteria grows on them if nothing grows on them within three days they are completely clean and ready for mycelium to colonize this is what your agar cup should look like completely colonized i hope this video helps you much love